Look at the oh, sauce. Nah, nah, Look nah, at nah, Jay's nah, on nah, mic. Nah. Look at the sauce, mama. <laughs> See the vibes, man. I got, I got the man. What they call you, the the heartbreak chef, man. Like the heartbreak kid. No Shawn Michaels. How do you, how do you get that name, man? Uh, so kind of the key. You got a fried chicken recipe to the to the to the gal dumb's heart. <laughs> I kind of uh, at my old hearts out here and break it back. At my old job, I was just kind of messing around with my uh, sous chef when I was about to start a catering company, and we we're just like kind of joking around, bouncing names, and he goes, "Why don't you call yourself the heartbreak chef?" And I kind of ran with it as a joke, and yeah. It ended up sticking, so here, here we are. Here and, we well, are. obviously, you made the transition from from that to this. Yeah, so that comes yeah. And then I know you were on. What was you were on Parkdale? Yep, yep. And then you made it to here. Yeah, right? so we started off in Parkdale. We were there for about seven months, right when the pandemic hit, yeah. and then um, we kind of needed a bigger space. Like we were getting a lot of volume and stuff. So I was just walking by here one day and. I saw it and I, I, I hopped on it. Just like I mentioned to you earlier, people just walk by and see spots. I guess something would take a liking to you. With, with this yeah, it's a, it's a good vibe, this area. You know what I mean? There's a lot of foot traffic. And, you know, we got the big window right here. We yeah. have it open. We're playing music and yeah. stuff like that. So people are always popping in their head, like, looking at the artwork and then, yeah. you know, smelling the food and stuff. And they're coming in and enjoying themselves. He's calling you know? your name. <laughs> now, let me ask you something because... You know, you know, they ask you, man. Even the gal, them, they ask you, say, yo, you know, is, is there such thing as too much sauce? Is there too, I, I got to ask you this. Is there such <laughs> thing as too much chicken? Too much, too much fried chicken? There, there's never, there's never a time when there's too much fried chicken. Yeah. I would say if you're just eating chicken alone, yes. But if you're eating it with sides, with meal, the you know what slot. I mean? All that, you can never have enough chicken. Because we see you stack and we see the buns. We see, like, yeah, that's kind of yeah. like your signature. Yeah, we yeah. See, like, yeah. Th th it's, it's a lot. Well, it's, right I mean, now, people, you want to get what you pay for, right? Right, like, right. You know what I mean? And, you know, if I go out, you're buying a, a burger from McDonald's for, you know, nine, ten bucks. Like, right. why not? You know, make sure the customer's getting, Whereas get, they, getting their money's worth. Providing when they value. Come in. You're Exa exactly. They're coming, exactly. They're, coming, they're coming out stuck. Exactly. So come hungry. Now, speaking of, speaking of like that, like I said, that, that fullness. How do you, something that's been on my mind to ask you, how do you, how do you achieve the perfect chicken to bun ratio? See, I'm, I might not be the right person to ask for that because I'm, I'm all about chicken. Like I hate getting a sandwich and yeah, yeah. it's mostly bread. Mm -hmm. So our breads, we use Martin potato rolls. And that's the, to me, that's the best bun you could use for a fried chicken sandwich. Nah, yeah. And you know, you just stack it up. So our buns are pretty small, right. but you get all that chicken, and then yeah. you get a bit of the bun. So you might have some it, extra to take home. Yeah, you have to use, have to, and even if you have to take a piece out of the sandwich and yeah. eat it later, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, go yeah, ahead, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, but yeah. to me, the chicken obviously is very important with the bun as a complementary yeah. piece. Now, for those I mean? that you don't, that, those of you that don't know, I got, I got the like the heartbreak kid, no Shawn Michaels with me. You got the heartbreak chef with me, man. You know what I mean? Jerome Robinson, of course, other known as the heartbreak chef, and we're live from the headquarters, live and direct. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I believe we're at episode forty. Shouts NT beyond the cam. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit that button, all that great stuff. But no, it's it's great to see the growth. We see you on the Maryland Dennis show. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, like how did that come about, man? You've been you've been you've been killing it. Man. Uh, so yeah, basically when the pandemic started, um, they just reached out and just wanted me to tell my story and what was going on and how we started and things like that. And then from there, it just became a, a beautiful relationship. And you know, after since then, I've made about 20, 20 appearances on the show and. It's been it's been really good. The staff there is amazing. Right. Um, shout out to Maryland Dennis Show. Yeah. Uh, they're amazing. They're made me feel welcome from day one. So it's just it's I love doing it um, when we can. Yeah. So that's become kind of like a regimen for you. Like and that's the morning show. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a morning show. It's yeah. nationally televised. Whereas, and, right. You know, which you, you, of course you you in Canada you know you know <laughs> you, know, you know what's going down. And I mean um so what exactly does your position entail on there like you're just giving the ingredients to yeah so you know just like uh every they have different segments and you know if they needs uh some cooking experts on the show they they give me a call and make some recipes and yeah. you know we just have fun with it like it's just basically how it goes right being a cooking expert um i wanted to ask you now like like for those that are looking to try something at home don't try what, what he does at home because you're not going to be able to perfect <laughs> it you know what i mean this to give them a little tutorial how how would you how, how would you go about making the best fried chicken sandwich in the most simplest way that you could break it down? 
Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm glad you said simple because you know yes. what? A lot of people think you need a thousand different ingredients right. to make something good. Right. When you're cooking, sometimes simple is better. Yes. The less ingredients you use, sometimes it's better. Less. Give them the sauce. You don't gotta give them too much of the sauce. <laughs> Just get them a tad bit right now. You know, break it down for them. I, right. I don't want you to give out the whole secret recipe because I know there might be a lot of mama spices behind the wall. But like, talk to them. Yeah. So when, whenever you're cooking, like like less is less. Sometimes less is better. You don't need to add a bunch of like a ton of ingredients and things like that. Less is like, more. We gotta you, simplify. You don't you don't gotta try and be fancy. You know what I mean? Especially when you're making fried chicken. Like so basically. The first thing you want to do, I personally, a lot of other people like to use chicken breasts and things like that. I use uh, boneless, skinless chicken thigh. Oh, wow. I just feel there's a lot more flavor in it when you're frying it. Right. Um, other people may not agree, but this is my recipe, so I'm, I'm telling you how I make it. Yes. Um, chicken thigh, boneless, skinless. Number one. Number one. That's the, that's the first thing. If you want to use chicken breast, go ahead, but it dries out faster. Right. So that's why I use chicken thigh. And most... Um, of to the get big places, here to, so the you, sauce is kind of yeah, like you cut into that. Absorb the juice is it, it's a, it's amazing. Right. So right. you want to you want to use that to start. Uh, you also want to get buttermilk. Some people use egg wash. Again, right. I'm using buttermilk for the um, Yep. Yeah, for so you want to marinate it in butter in some buttermilk. Right. You can put some sauce in there, some some paprika, some um, Frank's Red Hot, whatever you want to put just to right. flavor it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I leave it in the fridge for about the sauce. for about uh, 24 hours. So you leave that in the fridge, and then it's pretty simple. You just get, if you have a little air fryer, you have a deep fryer, whatever it is, uh, you want to keep your oil on about 325. Because yes. uh, you don't, if it's a thick piece, if the oil's too uh, hot, you're going to burn it. Mm. You're going to burn it before the chicken can actually cook. You're going to burn the outside coating. So I set it to about 325. I got the science now. Uh, you got your flour right here. Yes. Your, um, your buttermilk right here. Yes. Just put some garlic powder, some salt, some pepper, some paprika in there. Yes. Mix it up. Dredge it yes. two times okay. into the flour, back into the buttermilk, give into give the it flour, that, give it that dredge. Give then it into that the dredge. oil. Right. Um, when you take it out, just let it sit, sit on a tray um, for about 10, 10 minutes, get all that oil out of there. And then you could either put some sauce on it. I'm not going to tell you how I do my sauce, yeah. but <laughs> you can put some sauce on he it. He ain't giving me the recipe. He don't want to give me the recipe right now. It's okay. It's a, a, right. a simple way to do it, yeah. you, you can just put some mayo on it, mix it with some chipotle, things like that. Yeah. And then... You know, some people put lettuce some and tomato. If you want, there's all different exactly. types. Exactly. Some people put lettuce and tomato on it. Right. Uh, I'm me personally. I put coleslaw on it, right. and uh, you could either put do a vinaigrette one or a mayo based one. And How I about prefer, a garlic mayo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Something like that, and then you just top it up, and then the bun. Uh, you could either use brioche. A lot of people use brioche, which is good. Right. Uh, like I said, I use Martin's potato oh, rolls. The brioche buns are so and, and that tender. Yeah, that, like, yeah. The brioche soft. buns are, are great. You know what I mean? You just yeah. want to toast it a bit with some butter. Yeah, and you know you got your sandwich right there. It's pretty. Right. It's pretty. Pretty simple. Yeah. There's no. Uh, there's no super big science to it, but it just all depends on the little ingredients you use and how much you use of those ingredients. Right. Right. You know right. what I mean? Saying saying you might gotta you might you might gotta charge for the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't that ain't coming out. We get a lot of people asking. Yeah. You, there there ain't money long enough to get my recipe. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. what's the, what's the thing called the, the Snap app? The, the, the uh, what's the pay. What it cash app? Cash app? You have cash to, app? You have to cash app for the rest. You have to cash app for the rest. Speaking of which, have you ever thought about coming out with a cooking book? Uh, I have. It's uh, it's a lot of work. That's like not a have the heartbreak manual, man. Pri pri priority for me right course, now. It, it would be great. Like, and you know, there's a lot of great chefs in the city that are putting out amazing, amazing cookbooks and things like that. Um, but right now, that's just not on my list of things to do. But not to say that I don't want to do one in the in right. the future. Now, there's a lot of people from east to west, man. You got a lot of you got a lot of spots where we ain't gonna name drop. But I mean, speak on the importance of being like and holding it down in the downtown core in, th in this district. And I mean, you got the foot traffic, like. It, it, there's a lot, man. You can yeah. have those days when it, 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 there's a lot to take on, but you know, I know you probably got you know great staff and, and you know your great support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got I, my staff is they're they're solid. You know what I mean. A lot of anybody who works for me right now has worked for me in the past. You know what I mean. They don't need to be micromanaged or yeah. anything like that. I've had to, you from a one. Yeah, I've had some come and go, and you know, then that's it is what it is. But yes. they've been all great and they've helped me. Uh, get this to where I wanted to get it, and right. I couldn't have done it without the help of all of them. So, right, that, yeah. that is what it is. Now, um, to go back to a bit into the to the cooking show uh, theme, have you is that something you, that you've ever thought of to eventually like? Cause it's, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I would definitely uh, want to get a little YouTube thing going and yeah. things like that. And I can't go into too much detail, but right. 
You, you like other, a black Gordon Ramsay other, out there right now, man. <laughs> yeah. other, other producers. You might have some guys come in and audition and Ever. like, no, you're fired. You, <laughs> you didn't hit the right amount of, of sauce. You didn't hit the right amount of season. Yeah, <laughs> but other people yeah. have reached out, you know, about possible shows and things like that right, and right. without going into so. too much detail. And, you know, yeah. it's early stages of talking, but things like that. Like, and yeah, I would love to. Because even on YouTube, you, you, know, like, you, you come up, man. Like, I've seen the Marv TV guys shout to them, but I've seen, like, yeah, shout like over the years, TV, a lot of yeah. people have, like, checked in, came in, like, even some tours that have just visited Toronto and be like you know fried chicken spot like you know what I mean yeah so. we, we do get a lot of tourists like it's it's pretty crazy like the last like month and a half like I swear like just people from New York like tons of people from New York I must have popped up in some algorithm or some magazine down there because uh wow. but we do get um a lot of uh, people from the states and mm -hmm. a lot of people driving from Montreal and things like that mm -hmm. so which is uh much appreciated for them making the, the drive down no for sure I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen you do a waffle sandwich have I seen I have seen that yeah we yeah. uh that's like a brunch thing yeah we, brunch we started thing. off doing that at a festival like three years ago this is before we had the restaurant or anything and you know I was kind of just starting out and I had to like think of something you know to try and catch people's attention yeah yeah so I just thought you know people have done uh, sandwiches with a waffle, but no one's really put mac and cheese uh, inside the waffle. Right, no one's right. made the waffle out of mac and cheese. Right, right, right. So let me just try something and, you know, see what goes on and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, we did it at the at this festival and it was extremely popular. And, you know, I thought I'd just bring it back as a secret menu right. item, not really promote it. Yeah. And then people just kept on asking for it, asking for it. So then I just finally put it on the menu permanently. And speaking of trying some, I'm, I'm about to get into a bit of something, but we'll give it a minute because because I got a few more questions, but y'all don't see me get into that, to that cheesy flavor, <laughs> man. You know, if you know me, you know I'm happy when I'm about to eat. And I'm breaking my low carb fast, right? So um, what do we have here? So that right there is called the Mac and Charlie. Damn. Um, normally people get it with chicken, but obviously... You don't you don't eat chicken, right. so we're good with uh, just doing it with the mac and cheese inside. So it's a grilled cheese sandwich with uh, mac and cheese inside, and then you get a bit of mac and cheese on the side as well. Jeez, you can't have you gotta yeah. you gotta have that that wave, man. I gotta that Max Bigavel that cheese. Oh my gosh, look at the drip, look at the wow, sauce, that, look that at cheese. Oh that, my, that. look at the sauce, <laughs> mama. That, that looks you good. guys that know what's good. about to go down, man. It's hot. Be careful. Oh yeah. <laughs> now how do we, how do we get the name Charlie here? I'm a big fan of, uh, there's this show called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm. And the two main characters are named Mac and Charlie, and they're always coming up with some kind of like zany, zany plan or idea. And so I just thought I'd just incorporate it in the sandwich, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
you know, I can't be here all the time and that's why I have people that I trust. Right. And you know, uh, you come two weeks later and it's completely different. You're not gonna wanna come back, especially like, like that's why McDonald's and all those places are so successful. Yeah. No matter where you go in the city, right. the Big Mac tastes like the Big Mac, right. you know what the I mean? Name so brands are the name brands. We have recipes that we follow and things like that. And you know, you just follow that recipe and it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's foolproof, you know what because I mean? Because even growing up in, in, in our culture, the Western culture, you know, we, you have a lot of like, island restaurants throughout the city and you'll hear people that, that if there's more than one whether it's like sunrise or main shots yeah. they'll be like yo that main shots didn't taste the same or that barbecue chicken didn't taste the same because that's grandma's right. cooking right there no there's no <laughs> there's no recipe that's you can't that's, duplicate that's it the man. Salt. You can't that's duplicate just the, the that's the taste as you go yeah you know what i mean grandma doesn't want to give up her, uh, her her recipe to anybody you know what i mean so Spe speaking of which can you tell me uh you know a, a story a childhood story or memories that, that, you know, you took on from the elders that you could remember, you know, getting your, that first, you know, whole meal cooking, like, like you know what I mean? You, you, you got that, you got that A1, that, that you know what I mean? The, from, from mama or, or, yeah, or from grandma that, so, that you learned. Yeah, every, all the, you know what, like the men in my family, none of them, none of them really cook. Like my dad can't cook for shit. Oh. My mom, my right. grandma, they were always the ones that would cook, you know what I mean? And my mom used to make great West Indian food. Um, she comes from Polish and uh background. Right. So she would make crazy West Indian food. My dad's Jamaican. So same kids. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. Um Shouts to Mama. <laughs> my dad would you know, he can he would make like spam and eggs with onions. Like that's that was his meal. And yeah. I, I ain't eating yeah. that. But my mom couldn't really throw down my grandma can cook. It was the ladies in the Yeah, family. my um my West Indian grandparents can cook like crazy yeah. like all the women in my family yeah. um couldn't really cook so i didn't really you know it wasn't an aspiration of mine to want right. to cook you know what i mean you. i did yeah like I, I didn't see like the men in my family doing it and yeah. back then like cooking wasn't seen as like you know a, a masculine thing of course. you know what i mean like now you know you see a, tons of chefs and things like right. that but unless you were doing the the fine dining stuff like no one really there wasn't really any cooking classes in high school for me and stuff like that so you know what i mean like so being seen as like a cook or a baker or something like that wasn't like the cool thing right. but then i started working in restaurants from a young age and things like that and i got like this passion for it and started loving it and you know i didn't take it serious back then mm -hmm. but like the older i got and the more i kind of uh advanced in my career i kind of taken it more of a, a vow to yeah, yeah and and started to you know love it a lot more than right. it wasn't just a job it was more i could passion. see it being a passion and a career going forward, you know what I mean? And then as I got older, I just kind of got tired of working for people. Of course. And then I just tried to do my own thing, you yeah. know? Shouts to being a young yeah. black entrepreneur, <laughs> brother, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It down, <laughs> especially in these times. Um, mm. With Mother Day, Mother's Day around the corner, yep. um, can you recall the first meal you made for, for Mama? Oh, shit. Ugh. Or I'm her favorite I'm, dish? I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think, you know what I mean? Because yeah. my, uh, my brother's also... Uh, a, a, a great chef and he's in Paris right now oh, my wow. young my younger brother wow. um so he has a restaurant you, out there? yeah he has a restaurant out there wow. it's not his he he he's a chef at yes. a, a really popular restaurant yes and um so you know what normally when it came to that like I didn't really he's more of the fine dining like you know sit down for my like my mom eats that kind of stuff like my brother's more of the one that takes the lead on that yes. like I'll make my mom a sandwich or whatever of she's course. hungry or whatever but like to sit down, I've never actually made her like a sit down, yeah. like fancy like this is her meal. Dish. Like my, bro I leave that to my brother. Like right. that's I know when I need to step back, and that's that's his that's his field. What's the fried chicken secret to a woman's heart? <laughs> you know what? Don't don't let these women fool you <laughs> that they don't they want to yeah. eat healthy and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they don't. Sometimes they do. They want to you know dig I mean? out and dig up. So, sometimes they do. <laughs> But you know what, like, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great, it's a great little, it's just a great little snack. It's a great cheat meal. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Even if you do want to eat healthy, like you can never go wrong with having like some mac and cheese and a fried, fried chicken sandwich. You know what I mean? If any cheat meal, that's what I would go to. It wouldn't be a burger. It wouldn't be, it would be a nice fried chicken sandwich. It doesn't have to be our, our, our big ass one, the large one. It could be the smaller version, but you know what but I mean. I, mean like, I feel it with the, with the with the Valentine's vibe. It could be like a little, like a, you know, the fried chicken marinated in some basil pesto sauce, or that would be good. Yeah, like a pasta. Yeah, that would be good. That's what I was gonna say. So, is there maybe a pasta dish that would be your go-to? That would that you cook for your significant other? Yeah. So, like for Kate, like for at the restaurant, we don't we don't really do that. But for catering, of course, we've definitely done 
things like that. And it's not just fried chicken. Like, we do everything yeah. for our catering, for our weddings and things like that. Like, we yeah. do all types of stuff. But, like, I might have to steal that. Yeah, like, like the way your team looks, I can see. Yo, I'm going to I'm gonna have to send you the, send you the invoice in a bit. But, I mean, you can have the bow tie. Like, I can see your chicken yeah. with, in something like that, a bow tie with that nice, you know, yeah. that. I guess we, we, definitely, we definitely do pastas and things like that we definitely have our catering menu where we do other things it's not just fried chicken we do all types an association of with sauce baby you know the vibe man. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll put the contact and the details and we'll figure it out man in conjunction but uh, all right i got another how-to for you though yep um how to make the best jerk chicken like how, jerk, to, how yeah. to make a good jerk chicken that's uh, jerk chicken. Simplified. Yeah. You know, I mean, jerk, heartbreak way. Jerk, jerk chicken's an, an, another one. You always, the key to all these kind of when you're dealing with chicken, things like that, you want to make sure it's marinated. Like for jerk chicken, you don't want to just add your, your marinade and stuff like that and then cook like it right away. people just add that little barbecue jerk sauce. Yeah, you want to you wanna actually like let it marinate, let it sit 24 hours. However, like, you don't even have to do it that long. It's just completely up to you. And then you want to, you know, you put your spice in there, your cloves. You, you just want to make sure you have the right amount. Me, personally, I can't handle spice. I can't handle heat. It's so, just like me. Yeah, yeah I, can, I, can, I can't do it. Like, you know what I mean? I, I take my, my jerk chicken mild. You know what this is? So, guys like me and you, we get out of the kitchen. You yeah. Know, so you can't take it, get it out of the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. We are. We are. Yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't do it. But if you, like, if you want to do mild or you want to do, the hotter you want to do, if you want to do a hotter jerk chicken. Yes. Leave some of the seeds from your scotch bonnet peppers in your marinade. Oh. So the more seeds, the hotter it's going to be. Right. So me, if you see mine, there's not... Well, at the restaurant, it's pretty hot. So, but because I'm not, I'm not eating, I'm serving it. And a lot yes. of people want the hotter, the better. Yes. Um, so you just want to add more seeds and things like that. And you just, it's all about your, your marinade and how long you let it marinate for. Right. So that's, the, that's probably the most important ingredient and then if you have access a lot of people don't have access to it but you go up to Eglinton Road and stuff like that you yeah, see them yeah, cooking yeah. on those drums and stuff like that. Right, right. you see them cooking on those drums and stuff like that that's the authentic like you'll get that smoke you'll get that taste you yes. know what I mean it's different than so you want that to be grilled milk. or baked yeah you want uh, me me uh preferably I would I would say grilled like you know you could bake it on obviously it's delicious yes. but when you grill it you get that like smoky flavor and you know what I mean? You get everything. You put that lid down. You get all the, the juices trapped inside the chicken and the smell. And it's, it's, it's just so good. Like, so, you know, Eglinton, West Little Jamaica, I love, the, I love the jerk chicken down there. You know what I mean? Like, you go there, get a haircut at 2 in the morning, and there's yeah, still the people out there yeah, cooking yeah. jerk chicken at 2, 3 in the morning on those yeah, drums. Yeah. You know what it's I mean? Culture, so, culture. yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's to me how you'd make the perfect jerk chicken. Right, right, yeah. That's what's up, man. Um, have you ever been in, on any food, uh, any other... Like, I can say, like, how there's, like, the, uh, what do we call it, the, you know, how an AGO comes out, and there's, like, a lot of, like, food festivals and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you've been yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've been uh, maybe about six. Uh, this is before we opened the restaurant, because, like I said, we opened during the pandemic, so right. there was no real, real food festivals going on. But before that, yeah, there's uh, a couple big ones in Toronto that we did um, with Taste Toronto. They did, like, they do Taco Fest, they do Brunch Fest. Right. Um, they do a bunch, and they're extremely popular. Mm -hmm. They're they're great, and they they really helped me get my name out as well. Right. Like before I opened my restaurant, right. so yeah, like things like that we did, and then hopefully in the upcoming months and this summer and stuff like that, we can get into a couple more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of getting into it, we about we about to get into that. We about to get into that mac and cheese, man. <laughs> and, and a friend of mine actually mentioned to me um, uh, before I forget, how do you incorporate your sides? He wanted me to ask you that. Or how did you incorporate your sides? How do you come up? Because I mean, yeah, I see pineapple right here. I don't know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, that's for the that's for the jerk chicken. That's, that's for the, the dutty chicken sandwich. The so. dutty chicken sandwich. So that's a jerk chicken. For those sandwich. that don't know, let them know what the dutty chicken sandwich is. <laughs> it's a it's a fried it's chicken menu. sandwich with uh with jerk sauce on it, uh, grilled pineapple and uh, creamy coleslaw. So it's it's hot. It's it's spicy, but it's it's delicious. It's just uh another alternative to our kind of like our OG big ass chicken sandwich. So. Just gives the customer an option, one of the two. Actually, just yeah, just if you could go off the top, just list the menu. You know, if you yeah. So we got a uh, we got our big ass chicken sandwich. That's yeah. our most popular. That's yeah. the one. You know what I mean? People, and what's in it, and what does it come with? That's uh, our Carolina butter sauce, which is kind of like a that's like a it's like a buffalo 
okay, okay. type of sauce. It's more tangy. Huh. It's got like spicy ranch, some sweet pickles, yes. uh, creamy coleslaw. Yes. We got a Mac and Charlie sandwich. That's uh, a grilled cheese sandwich with mac and That's cheese. That's what we had. Shout out to the Mac and Charlie sandwich. <laughs> mac and we had cheese to split inside. that in half. Yeah, it's big. It's Yo. big. We got uh, deep fried Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big seller. We're always sold out of those. For all you veggies. Yeah, we got um, our mac and cheese. Uh, Vegans. Our big ass mac is probably our second most popular item. Mm. It's our mac and cheese with chopped up buffalo chicken on top. Mm. Extremely popular. I see that a lot on your IG too. Yeah, yeah, that's that one's pretty popular. Right. And uh, yeah, we got like smaller versions of the sandwich if you don't want the big one. Right. And things like that. Yeah. So the sides are just kind of there to just complement our sandwiches. You know what I mean? We have tater tots. I'm not a huge fries guy. Right. Like. I'll let, you can get fries anywhere. You, you can't like really, me watching the yeah. cows. You watching yeah. the food. You trying to, you're <laughs> trying to say, I'll take the Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Little, might have a little, you know, something, something to go. You, can, you can't really get tater tots in the city too right. many places. So we decide to put tater tots on our menu that instead reminds of me fries. Of breakfast waking up and watching cartoons. Yeah, as yeah. Do so this. tater tater tots are delicious, but we don't Brings just put memories. salt. We put Cajun. Our tater tots are Cajun, and we serve them with a side of uh, yeah. spicy ranch. It complements it really good. But yeah, our mac and cheese is probably our. Our most popular side. We yeah. have poutine. Yeah, we I have a bunch menu, of stuff. Man. That's what's up. You got the chicken and waffles. Yeah, chicken and waffles. Yep, yep. Forgot that about big that. Big jerk energy. That's a jerk Are chicken grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, so that, that the half ass, the, the half ass, the half booty would be like the the, the miniature sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So I guess I'm about. I'm, what I'm gonna have is the mac and Charlie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know, and that wanna know. And that need to know, where are we and where can we find you on social media? So we're uh, at 823 Dundas Street West. Yes. We're downtown Toronto. Yes. Um, and the Instagram is at the Heartbreak Chef. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're out here. Yeah. Beautiful day. You know, come yeah. by. Come with the girl, with the with the boyfriend, come with the husband. By, with but the don't kids, get your heart so broken. With the kids. Don't get your heart broken. We're going with the <laughs> heartbreak kid right now. You already know the vibes, man. You know what I mean? Make sure you guys support, you know. Like, love it, you know, like, subscribe, you know, to my channel, Sauce Have Mercy, the Heartbreak Chef, you know what I mean? I got the, I got, I got the man with the plan with me, and um, no, definitely, like I said, we're going to be back doing some food con connoisseuring, yep. you know, with the team, and um, no, appreciate you, brother, and appreciate the growth and what, like I said, mentioned earlier, to see what you're doing as a young black entrepreneur. Um, what, 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 speaking of which, before, before we get, uh, close off, are there any like black head chefs in the city or if not abroad that you could shout out that you would say that are doing their thing yeah there's a there's a even just black uh, content creators and things like yes, that like yes. yourself you know you yeah, do, thank uh, you, thank you. you're doing I, I see the rise yeah, of you as you, well I'm, you know I'm trying man. we work you man we work you man you know Marv, Marv TV are doing their thing yeah they're going in yeah. um, my boy Ryan Ryan uh, Hanks he's e famous you know yes. he's killing it right now and he kind of like Help me get my my foot in the door too, like with promotion and things wow. like that. And you know, Adrian Forte is another wow. young black yes. chef that's just absolutely yeah. killing it, like yeah. different parts of the world right now. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of like, it's not even just black. There's a lot of like multi people from different backgrounds now. Of it's course, not like yeah. you know back 20 years ago where you right. just seen a lot of like white yeah, chefs yeah, and you know what I mean there were culture. yeah the diversity now in the city and yes it's it's really really picking up and that's a, yeah. to me that's a that's a good thing because you know it's great to see I you. get young black kids now you know messaging me and yeah. saying like it's good to see like yeah. another black guy doing what we we love to do because when I like I said when I was younger I didn't really have any too many black uh chefs to look up to you know with what that I mean? said and what would be the advice to the young you that didn't have the resources that you now have Oh, the the advice to the young, you know what? Like, it's just it's it's hard to put me because I yeah, don't try to come for his spot. Yeah, <laughs> no, but just take take time. You know what I mean? He might he might give it. He might give you one to the ingredients and doses, but you can't give out the whole. Can't give out the whole sauce. The 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 advice I would give myself is like this. This is something that I wanted to do for a, a while, and I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to approach it, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was to say that you know I was scared or. Lazy. It definitely wasn't being lazy, but it was more, you know, scared because, you know, like I said, there wasn't a lot of people yes. doing this and I didn't know how to do it. Right. So now I would say if you want to do something, there's so many different resources, resources that you can reach out to now. Yeah. And if you want to do something like this, you got to just try, right. try and do it. And, and not just with cooking and things like that, like 
anything that you want to do. You know what I mean? Just there's so many resources right now with the internet and there's so many other people that are doing what you're doing. Right. You know what I mean? It, there's no comp like reach out to people that are right. doing the right. same thing yeah. that you're doing. It, right. There's no, there's no, You'll be inspired. you know there's what I mean? Like, hands you like there's, I got, I got friends that own multiple fried chicken restaurants and stuff like that. And we communicate on a regular basis. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? There's no, there's enough for everybody, yeah. but you know, like just get that yeah. information because you can share things with them that you, you didn't know and they didn't know and vice versa. So there's enough food on the plate. Yeah. Come, come with something yeah. to the table. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it yeah. should be all love, all love in no, the city. Definitely. You know what I mean? You, know, you already know, brother. It's always <laughs> been and it always will be love. Appreciate <laughs> yep. you. Make sure you guys subscribe to the sauce and get over here for a bite. You know the vibes, man. My guy, Heartbreak Chef, you already know. Episode 40, make sure you hit that button, get in those comments. We out! <laughs> Come on! You guys don't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell up out of my business and what I'm what I be doing right now.